Harford Family House is the largest provider of transitional housing for families with children and unaccompanied adults 18 through 24 who are experiencing homelessness. Harford Family House strives to keep these families together, to get them back on their feet and help them to regain control. Stay with us in the next 30 minutes and you'll learn their story. I'm Christy Breslin and this is Harford Magazine. Many of us are not aware how large the homeless population is here in Harford County and there's so much that we can do as a community to give back and help these families get back on their feet. Going on four years, our CEO Robin Tomechko is here to tell us about all the good things that they are doing here at Harford County to help these families and what we can do to give back. Hi Robin. Hi Christy. Now Robin, what is the mission of Harford Family House? Well, through housing, support, and resources, Harford Family House provides um, support to families who are experiencing homelessness with the goal of helping them transition into permanent, stable homes. How large is the homeless population here in Harford County? It's huge. I think no one would have any idea in Harford County that last year the Harford County Public Schools said that there were 480 students that didn't have a home last year in Harford County Public Schools. Robin, many people just wonder, I mean, how does this happen? How are so many families becoming homeless? It's a variety of different situations. Um, we have folks who have kids or themselves have got into, they've lost their jobs, they've had medical bills, they've had all sorts of family issues that, you know, their savings went away and they couldn't afford the rent anymore. Um, there are others who we see, we saw one family here who the daughter, who was a child in the program and now she's an adult uh, with her own children coming back to Harford Family House. Um, I think it was last Thanksgiving there were two families that experienced fires that we had families. So people come a variety of, of ways. Um, in Haverty Grace last year, uh, the mayor called and said that there were two, there was a family of eight sleeping in the park bench, benches in Haverty Grace. And he said, Robin, is there anything you can do for this family? And I said, we're full right now. And he said, well, my church will pay for them for a hotel until you're, you have availability. And it was about a month and we had availability and we brought them all back into Harford Family House and they thrived here. They did awesome. But all six of the children had some sort of medical issue and um, dad lost his job, mom never worked, so they just could not support and pay for all their medical bills. So they lost their housing. They were living in Ohio. They, I think, ended up staying with relatives, but then the, it was a grandma and she got sick and couldn't take care of them. So they ended up here in Maryland and sleeping on the park benches in Haverty Grace. How many families have you served? Well, this December will end our 30th year of being in business as Harford Family House, so we're very excited about that. Um, <clears throat> and over the 30 years, we have served over 600 families, 1,900 individuals. What would you say are your greatest needs right now? Greatest needs right now, I, I would say the number one is always money, to help continue to do the work of the organization, to. Um, help support our families. Um, it costs right now about $25,000 a year to support a family for one year. That's rent, utility, case management, uh, to really kind of get them out of the program in one year. Um, we say it costs about $1,000 for rent a month to pay for one family. Um, so, you know, there's lots of 
financial needs for the organization. And right now we can serve 27, 29 at one time, but clearly based on the need, the organization needs to grow. We need to serve many more families. We know that those hotels on, in Route 40 are full of families that need our help, but we just don't have the space for them right now. So um, any donations that people can make will help us significantly grow the program. Um, we also need help from the volunteer perspective. So every time a um, family comes into an apartment like this, we fully stock it with furniture, household supplies, anything that they would need to maintain a household. And the good news is they get to take all of that with them when they leave. So we're always looking for volunteers who can come in and clean the apartments when a family moves out and get it ready for the next family. Um, we also do a lot of great fundraising events in the community. So if anybody was interested in helping us with some of these really fun events that we do, I know you've been involved in many of them. Yes, I have. <laughs> so thank you for your support. Um, but they're really fun events and anybody that wants to help uh, out uh, in any volunteer capacity, they could just call the organization, get involved. Robin, thank you, and thank you for everything that you are doing to really help us get through the crisis of homelessness. Thank you. Now, coming up next, we'll hear more about some of the families that have gone through such hardship and how we can give back by donating our time or our money. Stay with us. Matt Rahack was the founder and president of Harford Financial Group. He retired two years ago, and since that time, he has been a dedicated volunteer here at Harford Family House, and actually for many years prior to that. Hi, Matt. Hi, Christy. Matt, how did you first hear about Harford Family House? Actually, it was in 2003. Um, a colleague of mine actually mentioned that they were on the board of directors with a homeless charity, and I was interested in working with another homeless charity that would work with families as compared to just working with individuals and try to make a longer term difference with the homeless and actually moving them to independent living. But in 2003 is when I first heard about it and I began to volunteer and donate in 2004. You did a lot of volunteer work. Now why did you choose this specific organization? Um, the initial projects that needed to be done actually were um, renovations for the apartments, the 28 apartments that actually are um, the main hub, I guess, of Hartford Family House. And each apartment needed to be painted, floors needed to be refinished. Um, this is a two bedroom apartment. The kitchens needed to be redone. And then um, what was actually fun for some of the um, children trying to do their community service, I shouldn't say children, high school, people, okay. young people, um, doing their community service was that um, they enjoyed uh, picking out the carpets, um, picking the furniture out from what had been donated or you know, adding other pieces um, to each apartment. So we were starting from scratch with each one of them, but it was really worthwhile to see the reaction when the homeless families moved in, you know, to having a, a very safe place to be um, and raise their children for a period of time and recover from homelessness actually and be involved with their program. And Matt, you mentioned something about the Leadership Committee. What exactly is that? Um, actually, it's a group that was formed actually several years ago, five years ago or so, um, to donate money on a regular basis each year and be involved in fast-tracking some of the projects. Uh, as an example, Boots and Bow Ties um, started five years ago, and it was actually um, based on the founder, really, of Bowtie Bill, who actually was the founder, I guess, or the first president, I guess you would say, of the Hartford Family House. And um, they named this benefit for him, and each year it um, functions in um, right around Labor Day. The leadership group, though, actually is designed to try and help with any emergency-type items, too, if there's something that needs to be done quickly, um, rather than, you know, having a long involved process, we're able to actually react pretty quickly. As an example, if there's an automobile needed or some major you know, um, event to fund, then we can actually form and uh, get together. We get together on a regular basis to discuss you know, what we can do to help Hartford Family House. And they're business leaders, mostly people from private businesses here in Hartford County. On a personal note, what do you get from volunteering? I like to know that I'm helping families, I guess, on cold winter nights to be living in a safe environment and help them move toward independence. Matt, can you talk about your relationship with the staff here at Harford Family House? 
Um, I think the main thing really impressed me when I first came here was the idea that the, the staff, they're so kind to all of the folks that they actually help on a daily basis. And they view them as their guests, not as people that are underprivileged or they don't look down on them in any way. And they're really looking to make them succeed. That's really what this is all about. They have a tremendous success rate, you know, 80 to 90 percent a year of the people that come in here. Why, you know, move on to independent living. And that's really phenomenal. Um, prior charities that I had worked with in the homeless areas um, were thrilled for a three to 5% success rate. So you know, what Harvard Family House achieves is remarkable. And they have some rules, some guidelines. They really don't work with folks that are um, drug addicted or alcoholic. And um, because they're trying to create a safe environment for families. And that's also what really um, kind of reinforced my thinking about working with them on an ongoing basis. They're looking for a long-term success story. And that's really what I wanted in a charity as well. So that's why I think we were a really great match. Matt, thank you very much. They are so lucky to have a supporter like you in their corner. Thank you. Now, coming up next, we're going to hear about the various programs that Harford Family House has and how it is helping some of the clients get back on their feet. Today, behavioral health issues affect as many as one in five people, and we have developed a center to provide a single point of contact and access to care if you or a loved one is suffering from a behavioral health crisis. A behavioral health crisis refers to both mental health and or substance use issues. The very first thing you or a loved one should do if experiencing a behavioral health crisis is call our 1-800 number. This number will connect you quickly to an experienced team of behavioral health professionals who can help you assess your crisis situation and decide what your immediate next steps should be. These steps can include a mobile crisis team visit to your home, coming to the crisis center or setting an appointment for next day assessment, calling for emergency services and going to the closest emergency room, or a referral to another resource in our area. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP when you need help and please visit our website to learn more information about the services we provide. Allison Chapman is the Director of Programs and Case Management here at Harford Family House. Allison, thanks for being with us and thanks for putting all these wonderful things together for our community. Thank you. Now, Allison, what kind of programs does Harvard Family House offer? So we offer um, an emergency shelter program for homeless families here. And then we have a Ready by 21 program, which we've partnered with DSS to offer shelter for more of an independent living for youth age 18 to 21. We also have supportive housing program where someone in the family would have a documented disability. And then we also have an unaccompanied adult program for individuals between the ages of 18 and 24 without the support of DSS. Who's eligible? What are the eligibility requirements? Sure, so our referrals all come from the Harvard Community Action Agency. So to be eligible for shelter in our program, um, a family would have to first present as homeless to the action agency, and then a referral would be sent to our shelter after being screened at the agency. Aside from homelessness, what would you say are the biggest struggles that your clients are facing? Transportation barriers, um, that's a huge issue that our families are facing, as well as finding gainful employment and then independent housing outside of our shelter is a big challenge they face. How do you help them get back on their feet? So immediately when a family would come into our shelter, we work on filling out housing applications. Um, we'll work on fixing any credit issues they may have, identifying any challenges that are in the way of them gaining independent housing. Um, we also help them find employment as well. Now at Harvard Family House, we know it is a priority always keeping these families together. Um, we make sure we're the only shelter in Harvard County that would take a family. And I think it's important um, when a family is faced with homelessness, the last thing they want to worry about is where everybody's going to sleep at night. So being able to keep the family together in our shelter is a huge priority, and they're able to do that here. Um, families also can come in and children are able to remain in their home school, which is important too. So we like to keep the stability um, for the family while they're here. Now talk about one of your newer program, the one geared towards young adults. Sure, that's the Ready by 21 program um, and the Unaccompanied Adult program. So those are the two programs where we're catering to the uh, homeless individual that's under the age of uh, 24. Now aside from that program, you have two other programs that you were talking about? 
the emergency shelter program and the supportive housing program that we offer. So the supportive housing program is that program where we serve families that have a documented disability, and the emergency shelter program is for up to six months for a homeless family. Allison, how long is a typical stay here at Harford Family House? Um, the, for the emergency shelter program, it is up to six months, and for the supportive housing program, a uh, family could remain in the program until their youngest child is the age of 18. Allison, is there any certain story or experience from working here that really stands out in your mind? I think more recently we've been seeing a lot of um, grandparents come through our program. Um, so this would be a person that's at a different stage of life that hasn't prepared themselves to take on um, the challenges of raising a child. And I think that the story of Donna Blunt is one that really rings um, in my heart as well as other staff here. What about getting the community to help? There's always a need for volunteer support here. Um, anytime a family leaves our program, we like to do our best to prepare the unit for the next incoming family. So the support of the community is huge to help with that. When somebody does come in and offers to volunteer, what would some of their volunteerism duties be? Uh, preparing a unit, cleaning a unit, painting um, a unit, getting linens in place, um, supplies, soaps, paper towels, things like that. What do you think the volunteers take away from their time here at the Harper Family House? I think it makes anyone feel good to know that they're helping a family that's coming in with nothing to be able to let them come into a, an apartment and see that they have everything they need to get started and back on their feet again. What is something you want everyone to know out there about Harford Family House and what you do? Um, I feel that all the staff here, our case managers, um, we all have our hearts invested in these families and we all wanna see them succeed. And when a family is able to leave here back on their feet, it's the best feeling for us. Thank you so much, Allison. Thank you. Now, coming up next, we're going to speak to a former client about her experience at Harford Family House and where she is now and what is she doing. Donna Blunt is a former client here at Harford Family House. She is here to share with us her story, how she became homeless and how she overcame that and now is living a very happy and successful life. Hi, Donna. Hi, Christy. Donna, can you talk about the circumstances that led up to you becoming homeless? Absolutely. I was living in a one-bedroom apartment, and um, there were a couple of family members that had passed away, and I retained custody of my grandson. So through all that stress, my health kind of took a downturn. I lost my job because I needed to be with my grandson quite a bit. Um, because of everything that he was going through. So I lost my job, and then I then became homeless. How did you first learn about Harford Family House? Well, I was in a motel through um, Community Action Agency, and they, in turn, hooked me up with Harford Family House. I didn't know, you know, I was, I was terrified. I was desperate. I didn't know how long that I would be able to stay there with my grandson. Of course, you don't know what you're going to eat. You're just terrified. Uh, and that's how I got in the Harford family house. Allison, my caseworker, called me in for an interview, and they took me the very next day. How did they help you and your grandson? Oh, my gosh. These are amazing people. What they did was they moved us in right away. They they set up all the whole apartment with beds and furniture and dishes and, and food. Um, at one point, they even gave me a gas card so I could go and apply for jobs. Um, they, what else had they, oh, I had furniture in storage that I didn't have really money to pay for the storage, and you know you can lose your things. They gathered volunteers, they moved all my things out of storage up into the apartment. These are amazing people, they really are. How are you doing now? Well, I completed the program in the year, actually six days short of the year. I... And currently, I'm a school bus driver. I retained my CDL. Um, I love doing that. We are buying a mobile home. Wonderful. Yes, in a wonderful park over in Cecil County. We are very happy. We are very happy. What would you like others to know about this experience since you've already gone through it? Well, what, the advice that I would give is just talk to your case manager. There is hope. There's always hope. These people are here to help you. All you, you know, you just need to 
kind of follow the program. They will help you. They give you plenty of ideas to go and and get a job, and they try to help you with like resources on daycare and things like that. And it's it is a struggle when you're a single mother or or even a family with some children. I mean, sometimes you when you don't have your own family, you need the support of people like these. Donna, thank you. I'm so happy for you and I'm so happy for your grandson. And we are just so lucky to have this organization right here in our backyard. Thank you. Well, Harford Family House strives to help everyone and anyone that they can who is experiencing the crisis of homelessness. Coming up next, we'll hear another story from one of their clients. Clara Blankenship is a current client here at Harford Family House with her two grandkids, and she says that she's had a really good experience, and she's hoping that many others can have the kind of experience with Harford Family House that she has. Hi, Clara. Hi, Christy. Miss Clara, tell me about yourself and your grandkids. Okay, I just turned um, 69 years old, and I'm a native Harford County, and I've lived here my whole life. And I love it. And my grandchildren, Raven, which tur just turned seven, um, she's my little angel. She's almost third level, reading level in school, and doing wonderful. They go to Hall's Crossroad, and Zayden just turned six. So, but we just had experience. I had to take him. Had to take him in an ambulance to the hospital because he was running a high fever, 105 fever. And um, so if he's not better with the fever tomorrow, we have to take him back to the hospital for tests. If you don't mind, tell me how you ended up at Harford Family House. I had went to uh, Energy Assistance a few times, and then I talked to Brian. He's with uh, uh, Helps Families That Are Homeless, because we were like homeless for like five months. And we lived in different motels and everything. So Harford House contacted me. And we came in, they talked to us, and the next day they put us in a home. And we've been really blessed. I love it. They are wonderful. They are all wonderful people, every one of them. And um, they they have helped me with um, my finances, you know, getting them straight, with finding a new home, trying to find a new home. Um, just every day seeing them. We live right over top of the office, so... It's, it's nice seeing them every day. How are they assisting you with getting back on your feet and living an independent life again? What they do is um, we have meetings. Um, I meet with my counselor, um, Kathy, which is in the office. And usually it's once a week or, um, you know, if they don't have other appointments. And I usually see them on a daily basis to say hi to them. And um, they, they just help you with um, giving you information to look for homes um, in this area or wherever that is good for you. Um, we have meetings over at the church uh, once a month. I believe it's the first Monday of the month. And they have resources that help you through grief, through anything that you're going through. And um, they're, they're just wonderful people. They also help you if you need food. Um, like living here, you really don't have to have any um, expenses like other than to buy food that you need because they supply you with all your paper products, um, anything like that that you need. So they're really, they're really great at that. How have your grandchildren been handling the situation? You know what? We honestly, we love it here. Um, we have a nice apartment. It's a two-bedroom, but the two-bedroom, the, the kids' bedroom is huge. It is like the whole width of the place. And they each have twin beds, and they have a walk-in closet. I took the smaller room because I don't need a lot of space, you know. But they love it. And we, they have Halls Crossing School, and then they go to the Boys and Girls Club. They got scholarships for that. So they're involved in that, and if there's um, trips, anything like that, they do all that. So they have wonderful teachers at school um, that 
you know, have helped me a lot. You know, just being here, we have been through so much and we've come a long ways. What would you like to say to the staff here at Harford Family House? Well, I'm, I'm very proud of them and I hope they continue to do what they're doing with families. You know, there's sometimes things don't work out for some, but it's because they're not um, doing things that they should be doing to help their self, you know, because it is a six-month program. And um, I, I hope they continue, and I hope I've met a lot of nice families in here that, you know, like if it's something I have and they need it, I give it to them. I don't mind helping somebody else, and that's how they are. They, they are really good with everybody, and every one of them are so nice. You know, I, uh, they, they tell me I'm their sunshine. I, I make them laugh. I said, are you laughing at me? And they said, no, I'm laughing with you <laughs> and all. But I enjoy, you know, we're, the kids and I are really blessed. Miss Clara, thank you so much for being here and sharing your story. I know that couldn't have been easy for you. Thank you. Now we've heard about Miss Clara and her two grandkids. Coming up next, we're going to hear about a young woman that has been in the program about four and a half months. Malaysia Pugh is a client here at Harford Family House. She's only been here for a couple of months, but she's in a program that's really helping her grow and mature. And she says one of the best things that she has gotten coming out of the program is her confidence. Thank you so much for being with us today. No problem. How did you become homeless? What led up to this? My father died of an overdose when I was 14, and my mom is currently an addict. How long have you been living at Harford Family House? About four and a half months. How do you feel about this? How have you dealt with these circumstances that have come up in your life? I try to be positive. I try to give myself something to do every day. And then I have a really good case manager. She gives me a lot of advice. It looks like we have a baby on the way. Congratulations on that. She's a girl, her name's Aria. Uh, I wasn't really excited at first. I didn't know what to expect, but now I'm happy about it. Now I understand you're in a new program for youth. Talk about that. Actually, it's helped me a lot. And financial matters, finding a job, it's a whole bunch of steps that basically got me to where I am about budgeting, um, prioritizing a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and in the ways that it's helped me, I don't know, It's I feel like it's too many to count. Are you currently employed or attending school? I'm employed. And where do you work? Um, United Foods International. I'm a full-time employee there. How do you like working there? It's actually pretty easy. It's a warehouse job too. I didn't think I would like it, but I actually love it. Oh, that's perfect. And they, they work with me with hours and like when I have stuff to do. What are some of your goals once you leave the program? Stability, not coming back to the program. Not that I don't like it, but I'm, I'm trying to learn how to like be on my own. And I'm about to be a parent, so stability. How has the staff treated you? Um, great, actually. Donna's my favorite, not just because she's my case manager or anything, but I feel like she's the, like, like the mom I never had. I tell her that all the time. <laughs> it's just certain ways that she goes about things and how she talks to me. I really feel like she cares about me, like even outside of work. How has being at Harford Family House and all the programs that you have been enrolled in, how has that really changed you as a person? My maturity level is better. I wasn't comfortable with being on my own. Like I always needed someone around me. And now like I'm good. I don't feel like I need anybody. I used to feel like, like without friends or someone around me to not even be doing the same thing as me, but like to keep me going that I would fail. And now that I've been seeing Donna, it's been helping a lot. She gave me a lot of confidence. Like I wasn't this confident when I first came here. What are some of the hopes that you have for your daughter, Aria? That she never goes through anything that I went through and that I can give her everything that she wants. Like, ever. she won't want for anything. Well, Asia, thank you very much for being on the program. Congratulations on everything that you've accomplished. Thank you. And congratulations on your new addition. Thank you. 
Harford Family House's goal is to end homelessness one family at a time right here in Harford County. If you would like to volunteer, donate, or learn more about them, you can always visit their website at harfordfamilyhouse.org. I'm Christy Breslin. See you next month on Harford Magazine.